Don't invest in a mutual fund unless you're willing to do this. To finish out the statement, that is do the work. In this video, we're going to show you how Alex cue the music. Hey guys, welcome back to the Fast and Money Play. My name is Alex. That's Kirby. Um, and we're going to be talking about investing in mutual funds and the work that you need to be putting in. Kirby, what you got? All right. Well, I'm going to share my screen here. I can see it. All right. So here, look at that. I'm over here trying to exile boxes. All right. It's only a couple things. on, And this is just a normal mutual fund. This is the USN QX. This is a USA uh, NASDAQ 100 index mutual fund. And the things that you want to look at, and that's the reason why we're going over it here, is a couple things. The Morningstar rating, that's one thing you want to look at. It goes from, well, the funny is it has six, but I was about to say it goes from one to five, but this one has a Morningstar rating of six, but it usually it goes to five. So that's a good indicator that this is a good mutual fund. But uh, other things that you got to look at, even if they don't have the Morningstar rating on there, you want to look at the expense ratio because the expense ratio is how much per year that the mutual fund, the mutual fund manager, managers is charging you for having your money in the mutual fund. What I mean by that is in this case right here for uh, this mutual fund, USN QX, is they're charging you less than a half a percent to have your money in this mutual fund. Now, it's mutual funds I see that have, have a 3% charge and things like that. So that is a key. Me, I look for mutual funds that have an expense ratio of three quarters of a percent or less. Uh, you want no low, you want no low, meaning that you don't want them charging you money on the input or the uh, outgo of your money going to the fund. So no loads and things like that. Another key element you want to look at is the turnover ratio. The turnover ratio means how much percentage of the portfolio, that's this one right here. I, my highlights is acting funky. But what percentage of the portfolio is moved in and moved out over a you know 365-day, 12-month time period? 10% is, is fairly low. And the NASDAQ 100, usually once or twice a year, they move uh, out some of the lower-performing uh, science and technology companies in the top 100 of the NASDAQ and then input other ones. So 10%, that's, that's about fair. So, so those are two things, expense ratio, turnover ratio, and then, you know, low. You want no low. And then now moving forward, before I go forward, Alex, you got any questions about anything that I'm putting up here? So the no load, um, is that, it, so you said it, they don't charge you a fee on the input or the output of your money let's look at this i'm just trying to understand that because i know there's a fee when you buy that uh mutual fund no load no load funds here you go the fund that charges no sale fees either on the front end when you buy fund shares or the back end when you sell fund shares so this is a no load so that means you like so it's some mutual funds out there that when you buy into the fund, it has a 3% load fee. That means, or a 3% exit load fee. You know, so as soon as you buy into the fund, automatically 3% goes to the manager or goes to the fund, yeah, the fund manager. Or it may be no load on the front end. And then when you exit, no matter how much money you made, 3% goes to the manager. It can be different fees, but you want no load at all. And that's what this fund is. Okay. So what question did you have or confusion that um, you had? With yeah, this? I'm just confused because I, I know it's charged me fees, this specific mutual fund for buying it. So what fees did you charge? Him? I mean, it was nothing high, but it was like, um, and I didn't look at what percentage it was, but um, it was like, I don't know, $20 or something, something like that. I, I can't remember. Well, 
Well, I got a question for you. Are you a USA member? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, is this on USA? Oh, yep. Yep. Yes, it is. Yeah, no, this is on, uh, get on Charles Schwab. Well, yeah, because Charles Schwab bought USA's brokerage. That's okay. hence the reason. Me, I have the same one, and I don't pay no low fees. Dang, you are lucky. <laughs> yeah, so. but, but anyway, but I mean, but but that's but that's a good thing to point out. And I, if I was you, I would go look in there and check what's going on with that. But this is no low. It's been no low for me for the past 10, 15 years I've been in it. Um, but yeah, so that's that's something we'll look out. So minimum initial investment. So understand this one. I want to bring this up because it was funny because Alex had a problem with this one also. So the minimum, the minimum initial investment. What it's saying is when you initially start to invest in this fund and understand if we move into this recessionary thing that people are talking about, that number will drop. But what it's saying to initially start. So to first invest in this fund is $3,000 initially. But the next time you put money in the fund, it can be from zero to a billion dollars. I mean, usually the minimum is like 50, but you get my, my drift of this. Initially, you got to put in three thousand to start the fund, but after that, any you can put any amount after that and just do it on a drip monthly basis or something like that. But one thing you want to look out is the minimal initial investment. So with this fund here in particular, you can't go and say, "Oh, I'm gonna start investing in this with a hundred dollars." But that's something that you need to look at, Alex. You remember when you did that one? Yeah, I remember because I thought that I I thought I had to put three thousand each time. <laughs> Okay. All right. Yeah, that's what I brought it up. <laughs> and then so and then so those are you know initial and and again I'm just on you see the website up here. I'm on morningstar.com. You can put in whatever mutual fund ticker symbol you have. This in this instance is USNQX. And then I don't need to look at the charts because it follows the Nasdaq or the Nasdaq 100 in the regular markets. Um, I think we probably tapped out. Oh, wait, I'm moving too slow. All right, so here go performance. Performance on this one right here. Uh, over this growth of $10,000. Uh, USA and QX is the blue line, is the blue line here. The index itself is the red, and then gold is just the category of science and technology. As you've seen, $10,000, if you started in 2012 here, 2012, $10,000, it went all the way up to a high of about a shade under a shade under eighty thousand dollars from 2012 so around a 10 year period now you see year to date is down 30 percent but this is what it was up 26 percent 48 percent you know over these different time frames so you want to look at that just to see how it how it looks compared to the index because this is the NASDAQ, the mutual fund here, and the, this is the actual NASDAQ index and see how it performed better or worse than the index. And as you see, over the years, it's performed better than the index itself. Um, let's go to another avenue of it. And then I'm just looking for, I'm looking for the top 10 holdings. That's really what I'm looking at. That's the only thing um, else I'm trying to find here. Uh, right here. All right. And then the next thing you want to know, and this is, I believe this is the sixth thing. The sixth thing you want to know is actually what you're investing in. So for this mutual fund by itself, and again, you can just go to Morningstar and type in any symbol you want to. You want to know what you're investing in. U.S. equities, non-U.S. equities. So 97.39% is in U.S. equities. Non-U.S. equities in 2.35%. So if you want to invest in the United States and get away from all these countries that's doing whatever that you don't know about, then this might be a good fund for you. But in the asset allocation, it will break that down for you so, so you know where it's at. Um, and then you go down further. And then you can look at this, cyclicals, they got the basic materials, the consumer cyclicals, the financial services, real estate, just letting you know what services you're in. You're in, uh, then you got communication services, which is 15%. You know, energy, rich, really is nothing. Uh, industrials, technology, 46.65% is in technologies. And then consumer uh, defensive, healthcare utilities, that's where you're at. And then 
this is the part that I was trying to get to is what are the top 10 holdings in the the top 10 holdings in the fund itself. As you see, household names, you got Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Tesla, uh, Alphabet, which is Google for people that don't know, Class C and Class A shares, Meta Platform, which is Facebook for people that don't know, NVIDIA, which is the semiconductor sector that go into cars, uh, laptops, tablets, and things like that. PepsiCo is moved into a big position. And then you have Costco Wholesale, which is another one that's out there. And then if you keep going down, you got Broadcom, T-Mobile, Cisco, Tester Instrument, all U.S. companies, Comcast, Adobe, Qualcomm, Amgen, uh, Honeywell, Intuit, and Intuit is the tax preparation for, you know, most people in the United States, TurboTax and stuff like that. Intel, Netflix, AMD, PayPal, and Starbucks. So that's the like top 10% of the portfolio is sitting right there. So know what you own, own what you know, and Alex, what you got after I'm trying to stop sharing this screen. <laughs> no, I, you're showing me a lot more than I knew about the mutual fund that I own. So <laughs> glad we're doing this video. <laughs> and mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, I invest in that one and, uh, S&P 500 mutual fund, uh, BSPX, I believe. Uh, so I do both of those. And that's the thing you, you just want to, when you invest in, know what you own. If you know what you own, you won't be fickle and want to ready to jump ship and bail out when, you know, everybody, the herd mentality, everybody starts saying, oh, the economy's doing this or economy's doing that. If you know what you own, if you just randomly blindly just saw this video and said, oh, I'm just going to invest in that mutual fund. And you had no clue what was in it. Hell, I'll be scared too. But if you know, like, oh, Apple, oh, I ain't worried about Apple going nowhere. I'm not worried about Netflix. I'm not worried about those. Then you could just sit there and just be like, oh, okay. And then you know that this mutual fund, just for example, but whatever mutual fund, you want to know the turnover rate. When they turn it over a lot of stocks, that means they're trying to be you know, traders and try to time the market. You don't want nothing that's trying to time the market. If you see something with a turnover rate of 30, 40, 50%, then you don't want to be in there because they're going to charge you fees up the wazoo to do all that trading and 99.9% .9 chance that it will not outperform the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ. You saw my screen shaking right there? Yeah. That, that was like that was uh, effects. <laughs> that was effects right there. That's, that's about as far as we're going to go with FX over here. But yeah, that's... That's really what you want to look for. And when, once you know that stuff, you know the expense ratio and all that stuff, then it works better. And then you just looking at, you know, the long-term, you know, gain of it and how the stock, I mean, the mutual fund actually performs, but the Morningstar rating, the, you know, know if it's load or no load, uh, the expense ratio, you want to know what you own. So you want to Go into this, you know, see what sectors that the stock is in and want to see what the top holdings that's in there. And then from there, you just droop, just keep buying it every month. You know, you got to cover that initial expense and it's a different price for every mutual fund. But, you know, you cover that initial expense. And then like me, like me, I started off doing the financial crisis. So this same mutual fund to get in only cost, uh, I think, I believe it was a thousand dollars for this mutual fund. But as the market goes up, the barrier to entry rises with it. That's why mutual funds are higher. But if we ever get a super crash, then mutual funds will lower that number so more people can get in. But, you know, I got in there and I just start off just $50 a month, $50 a month. And the more money I made, I just kept going higher and higher and higher. And then I just went off from there. Well, guys, with all that being said, if uh, you have any questions, let us know uh, down below in the comment section. Hit the like button, subscribe button. Uh, don't forget to share with everyone you know, and we'll see you guys in the next video.